Entities are objects that are multiplayer compatible. When an entity is created on a server, it will be also created on each client that is connected to the server. Entities can have properties marked with the net attribute. Any property marked with this attribute will be synchronized across the server in all of the connected clients so that the value is always the same. Entities with networked properties must be marked as partial so that the cogeneration can work. It's important to note that when a property is marked with the net attribute, it is owned by the server and cannot be changed by the client. I'm writing some debugging code so that we can display the value of the networked integer on the screen. The client's text is green and the server's is yellow. We'll update this value on the client and see that nothing changes. And I will switch this to update the value on just the server and see that the value gets synchronized between the client and the server. We have another networking attribute called predicted. Prediction is when a client is given permission to assume the value of a networked property. Because of networking delays, it is sometimes useful for the client to be able to update the value immediately. If a client is wrong in its prediction, as say the value from the server comes in and it ends up being different, this is what we call a prediction error. When this happens, the server has final authority and the value ultimately gets set to whatever the server says it is. Entity has a spawn method that we can override to handle any initialization. Spawn will only be called on the realm that this entity has created. So if we create this entity on the server, it will only call on the server, not the client. If we also need to do some initialization on the client, we have a client spawn method. The client RPC attribute can be placed on any method. And what this does is it allows the server to tell clients to execute a method. In this example, I've placed an error message that will be displayed if this is being called on a server. However, if we are in a client, it will successfully display the death message. And then we'll scroll down, make sure we are in the server, and tell the client to execute this message. Methods with the client RPC attribute will have an overload method generated for them that allows you to send it to any specific client, or if you would like, send it to everybody. Inside the base game class, we have other useful functions, such as when a client joins the game or when a client disconnects. These would be useful, for example, when a client joins the game, you need to spawn a player entity for them. Or if the client leaves the game, you might want to send a chat message to everybody saying that so-and-so has disconnected. Networking can be a challenging topic to understand and especially challenging to cover properly in such a short video. If you have any questions or run into any problems, feel free to leave a comment on this video or join our Discord. Link is in the description. You can also check out our wiki page, which has more detailed information about networking and even some code examples. I'll try to cover networking in more depth in a longer video later on, but for now, I hope this gave you a basic idea of what sandbox networking is capable of uh, and what it's all about. The video that you're looking at now is a recreation of Surf and Bunny Hop in Sandbox. The full source code for this is available. Link is in the description. So there's a lot of uh, networking stuff to see uh, in that repository as well.